Hello, I'm Jean Bosman, Vice President and Principal Analyst at Hurwitz & Associates. And to my left is Dan Kirsch, also Vice President and Principal Analyst. And today we'll be speaking with Chris Richter, Senior Vice President at Level 3. And we're going to be speaking about security and uh, Level 3 as a company as well. Um, perhaps, Chris, you could just start off with describing the company and where it's located and what its basic uh, configuration what you, is. Yeah, what you, what, what you guys do. Yeah, you guys sure. Do. Well, at, at the highest level, we're, uh, we're over $8 billion, global company. We're a, a large network uh, services provider. Uh, that's what we're commonly known as. We have uh, over 10,000 employees uh, uh, around the globe, uh, primarily in, uh, in Europe, uh, North America, and Latin America and uh, expanding in, in Asia Pacific. Uh, we, uh, we're known primarily for private networking and internet connectivity. Uh, we used to be considered the carrier's carrier, but we have a broad range of security services, uh, voice uh, services, CDN, DNS, and, and hosting services as well. So mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty broad-based uh, mm -hmm. and well-rounded IT services company. Right. Um, I'm re responsible for the security services uh, oh, business. Right, right, right. And when you say your customers, there's a range of customers, right? So maybe large companies, global companies, banking, financial, but also uh, perhaps some service providers as well. Absolutely. I would think of as service providers. Absolutely, okay. just about every vertical you can imagine. Financial, of course, is a, is a huge vertical for us, but we also provide services to other carriers, mm. uh, wholesalers, uh, uh, hosting companies, other service providers, right. right? most definitely. So this gets really interesting because over time, more and more of the infrastructure of, of, of data center and IT is shifting o over time from traditional IT more and more to hosters and service providers. So you see this mix of kind of where the resources are and the things that need to be protected through security. So I just wonder if you could talk a bit about that, what kind of shift you're seeing in the marketplace. You know, I've been in the industry over 30 years and the shift is amazing. I, I, I saw the birth of the firewall when the internet came about <laughs> and it used to be, well, that was the only thing that you needed to right. protect you from, uh, from, from bad things on this thing called uh, the internet. Right. Uh, but it's gotten so much more complicated right. after that. Uh, across all of IT, there is a big shift to outsourcing. Um, mm -hmm. One of my uh, one, one of my favorite papers uh, or articles from the Harvard Business Review uh, it, it talks about the death of IT and right. how it's going the way <laughs> of uh, of the dinosaur. Right. Really, the, the the switchboards in the basement. Mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing companies used to have their own power generation. Right. Well, IT is going the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the same is true of the security uh, aspects of mm -hmm. of IT. Uh, Security is getting more and more expensive to deal with, and mm -hmm. just as mm -hmm. setting up your own uh, glass room mm -hmm. with uh, servers and mainframes mm -hmm. in them, mm -hmm. that's giving way to public and private clouds. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, application stacks are becoming mm -hmm. virtualized, containerized. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're seeing all aspects, uh, well, but primarily for efficiency and cost. But cost it's also control. a bit of a mix, right? So this mm -hmm. is causing, that's it, one of the challenges we wanted to talk about, that customers have to find a balance of what they want to keep inside the traditional firewall world mm -hmm. and what they're willing to put out in one or more clouds. That's and right. I'm sure you're involved in all those aspects. Actually, yes. Actually, I think hybrid models are the most popular right. today. Exactly. Where you define which VLANs you keep internally behind your own internal firewall which computing stacks and application stacks you run internally, right. and then which ones that you're going to outsource to right. public and, and private clouds. Right. Private clouds that are controlled within uh, uh, an organization's own infrastructure are also very popular as well. Right. But more and more of it is giving way as network speed, efficiency uh, picks up, it's, it's, it's definitely moving outside of the traditional boundaries of right. the local area network. Right, right, right. So what's that sort of workloads or data do you see going out to the cloud versus keeping in-house? I mean, what we've seen is you know, those core, you know, your IP, your customer data, a lot, a lot of companies still want to keep that in-house behind the firewall, and then other stuff maybe goes out to the cloud, maybe a variety of clouds. What have you guys seen? Well, that's, that's very true. Uh, the evolution to data moving out to the cloud started with marketing sites and then uh, retail transaction sites. 
but more and more we're seeing workloads move into public clouds because we're getting better at securing data within public clouds. Mm -hmm. We're securing access methods, encryption is improving. So we're even seeing uh, major manufacturers that have uh, very, very secure and private information on public cloud stacks mm. where those public cloud stacks have been locked down and mm. secured mm -hmm. from access. Now you can imagine putting your, uh, uh, your, your, your proprietary information, yeah. customer information, and IP out on a public cloud. Mm -hmm. It's happening today. Mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, it, it's more efficient, it's mm -hmm. more cost effective, mm -hmm. third parties that have to get involved mm -hmm. with the development of And you're converting CapEx costs to OpEx And costs. you're converting CapEx to OpEx, so, exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. But, but again, different customers are at different stages of adoption. What I'm wondering, right. what about your advisory role? I mean, you must be able to come in and help uh, people decide how to how to do this, how to implement security? Well, the biggest challenge with companies today, Gene, is, is a lack of governance. Most companies, hmm. uh, is, and, it, and it runs the gamut, from very large companies have an issue with establishing governance across security governance, that is, across all the companies that they're acquiring. They bring in, they acquire so fast and furiously that they aren't able to track uh, the shadow IT. Right. They don't, they'll, they'll bring in um, um, firewalls that may not fit with the standard mm -hmm. policy of the, of the acquiring mm -hmm. company. And it drives CISOs and CSOs insane mm -hmm. because they don't know what they don't know. Right. For smaller companies, the lack of governance could just re be reflected in a lack of security controls mm -hmm. and uh, 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 individual training on mm -hmm. the security basics, what not to click on mm -hmm. in an email. Mm -hmm. So the problem is mm -hmm. the lack of governance is per pervasive mm -hmm. across small and large companies. And then how do you marry that though with, you know, when you're acquiring companies or you have legacy hardware, you can't rip everything out. You know, you spent mm -hmm. a lot of money on that. So, so how do you kind of marry the lack of governance with needing to use uh, investments that you've already made? Well, I, I think that's where the network comes in because when, when companies come together, one of the easiest things to do is direct everybody through the same network mm. infrastructure. And if the more, and I'm speaking a bit philosophically here, but <laughs> philosophy is becoming reality here very, very quickly. If you can put security controls on the network, and the network can be that gateway through which you access, or all parts of your organization access the internet, then you can establish, it's more, it, it's more, uh, it's easier, I guess, mm -hmm. to, to establish a consistent governance mm -hmm. and security framework if the security policies and controls are established on the same that makes sense. network yeah. globally. Right, right, right. right. Um, but we've been hearing uh, recent conferences that there can be security intrusions that are there for 100, 200 days and, and before they're even discovered. Mm -hmm. uh, are you finding that and what can be done in a way to help identify those earlier on, or what, what can be done? So. Well, the, the best techniques um, against protecting yourself from zero day exploits, and these are zero days, and by the way, there is a big industry uh, in effect globally. Mm -hmm. Individuals who spend all day long researching, looking for z vulnerabilities that are not known, yeah. and then they sell them to the highest bidder. Mm -hmm. That's where those unknown infections come from that sit there for hundreds of days, sometimes wow. years. The, the best way to protect against that is to start with the individual, train them on what not to click on, just do not bring USB drives in, do not establish a governance program yep. which includes training of uh, individuals mm -hmm. uh, and, and basic security hygiene, data hygiene mm -hmm. techniques. Mm -hmm. And then also with governance, mm -hmm. you, you can get a solid understanding of what data is of the greatest value, mm -hmm. what the hackers are going to try to get their hands on. Mm -hmm. Then you can begin building controls mm -hmm. around that data to protect mm -hmm. it especially. Mm -hmm. You spend more money on the data that's uh, of greatest more, value. Most value. Yeah. And then you build, you build, so you build from the data out, sure. basically. Data centric, right. Right. So given that we're all here because of RSA mm -hmm. and the conference and all the tens of thousands of people here in San Francisco, <laughs> Uh, tell us what what are you showing or what are you talking about at the conference? What are you trying to you know kind of bring to people's attention about your solutions? Um, that's that's a great question, Gene. Thank <laughs> you for the setup. <laughs> Any, <anytime. laughs> the the uh, what Level Three is trying to convey at RSA is that 
one of the biggest problems with security facing organizations today is cost. It's far more efficient to put security controls on the network and use the network service provider's inherent capabilities to protect you than it is to buy, spend millions upon millions of dollars in equipment, maintenance, trying to find and hire the people to manage that, and then on top of all of that mess, uh, deal with the events and alerts. I can't tell you how many organizations I've visited who've spent millions of dollars in inventory maybe six months ago, and, that, and those security Fancy security appliances are still sitting in boxes. Well, they also turn off the alerts. It's something we've seen is that a lot of, a lot of these um, people in SOCs turn off the alerts. Uh, you know, there's so many false positives that, that you can only go through so many alerts in a day. Oh, no question about it. Uh, it's well documented that some very good technology out yeah. there and some of the best public, the, the biggest publicized breaches, the alerts have been sent, but they've fallen right. on deaf ears oh, because wow. of information yeah. saturation. Uh -huh. So you guys yeah. are, are historically sort of a networking company. Mm -hmm. what, what makes you think that, you know, and you're sh shifting to, you know, you're still doing networking, but you're adding mm -hmm. the security capabilities. What makes you guys sort of a unique, in a unique position or a good position to address security? Well, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, our global reach. Our network spans the globe. We monitor a great deal of traffic that flows on the internet in general. We consider ourselves to be very good stewards of the internet. These are things that we don't do for, for profit, but we, we actively shut down command and control servers. We shut down botnets that are attacking people, organizations. We've taken down uh, botnets such as SSH Psychos. That was uh, a, a very, very nasty botnet that was attacking vulnerabilities on SSH ports. We took down uh, Poseidon which is a point of sale uh, malware infection mm. and, and credit card skimming botnet. And we participate, we take down four to six botnets every single month. And we believe that given our visibility and the controls that we have on the global internet, we can deploy services that will benefit organizations So you as must well. have a huge amount of data, right? We have a huge amount of data. We And, so how, and how, how do you feed that into your clients and into your customers? So from a threat intelligence perspective, we ingest about 48 billion NetFlow events every single day. And that's a massive amount of uh, information that tracks the behavior of the global internet, not just on our network, but globally. With that information, we can derive and and determine behavior patterns on the internet um, for good and for evil. Uh, we can go pretty deep into our threat intelligence offering, there's a lot there, but that's yeah. basically how we look at uh, the behavior of the, of the internet, uh, take down these evil botnets, and ultimately protect our customers by getting very fine-grained with analysis of the traffic patterns uh, between their IP addresses and the rest of the internet mm -hmm. world, if that makes sense. We also, we also use our network to defend customers from DDoS attacks. We've handled some of the largest DDoS attacks uh, in history. Yeah. Um, and we also have a number of services that are deployed on our network that provide, if you can think of it as, as a gateway between the customer environment and the internet. There's a lot of things that you can do to protect customers if they are if they access the internet through secure gateways. Right, so that kind of brings me to the last mm -hmm. set of questions which I think could be summed up as what is the business value? Perhaps it's really clear, but uh, just give us a sense of after engaging with your company, mm -hmm. um, you know, what are the big business value uh, messages that you would have for senior management line of business managers who are not as technical? You know, you go to the show, everybody's yeah. talking about the technical yeah. part, but what about, you know, the, just the business value, business outcome. Well, here, it, here it is, Jane, yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, 10 years ago, the recommended cost, the leading analyst would say, you should spend no more than three to 6% of your IT budget mm -hmm. on security. Mm -hmm. Today, the average is 17%. And in some verticals, it can get as high as 40%. It is causing real pain to the point where it's hurting organizations' bottom line, mm -hmm. the bottom lines of organizations that have to decide do I spend money on IT resources that will help me grow my business, or do I shift that funding over to mm -hmm. security controls? Mm -hmm. yeah. And more and more, it's going toward the security side. Now, there's a lot of vendors. You, you'll notice, I think these are record attendance numbers at RSA, and that's for a reason. It's because of this shift. But it's hurting business. It's hurting the economy. Sure. And it's actually it's hurting the jobs market. Not only are hackers 
uh, hurting companies and, and impacting uh, organizations economically, but just the spend, the amount that we have to spend to protect right. ourselves. So the business value yeah. in moving those controls right. to the network, mm -hmm. to a service provider model, yeah. is pretty evident. You right. reduce the cost, right. you improve security by uh, reducing the complexity, mm -hmm. And you basically maintain a much healthier organization as a result of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that is really what we're we're trying to do. That's, mm -hmm. and that is the biggest pain point um, that my customers express to me. Wow, and it just reminds me of that old say, statement by Archimedes. You know, give me a lever and I can move the world. Mm -hmm. it's, it just came to me that, you know, where you sit in the network, is is such a place that you can you can you can, you know, kind of you know, uh, centralize your security efforts That's in a right. certain place, and it has this, you know, it multiplier effect, I guess. That's right. I want to say. It was a little hard to say. But. No, that, that's exactly right. Uh, let us do the heavy lifting. Um, heavy lifting with fine grain controls and a great deal of analysis because of what we can see. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you still have to practice good governance. Mm -hmm. You still have to have security right. controls have in, in your environment. Have right. those things in place. You right. can't do dumb things. You have to teach employees to <laughs> protect the data. Mm -hmm. That's their responsibility. Mm -hmm. But uh, so much of, the, of, the, of security can be pushed out to the network. We, we believe the network should be the firewall. The network should be mm -hmm. the sensor. The network should be the ultimate uh, threat intelligence analysis tool. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is this has been great. Um, I think we'll kind of leave it there just for now. Thank you very much for coming and for explaining that to us. Thank yeah. you very much, Chris. Oh, my Thank pleasure. You. Thank you.